Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today for day two of five about borders and boundaries. How do we make them? How do they evolve? Are they good or bad? And also some strange and ambiguous ones. That's later this week, but don't worry about it. Today, we're talking about the evolution of borders. Borders are constantly evolving. They're tweaking and expanding. We're changing them. We're shrinking them. We're dividing people up. We're putting people together. And we will change a border for pretty much any reason at all. You know, there are political and social reasons, like uh, one country or one group invades another group, and so they take their territory, and that means we now have a bigger territory. Or the opposite, we have one country, and then we divide it into two. Those things happen all the time. Sometimes they happen for economic reasons, sometimes they happen for military reasons, sometimes they happen for religious reasons, like think about the Holy Land. Its borders are constantly in dispute, changing all the time. The Middle East has this problem right now a lot, but we'll come back to the Middle East and some of the borders there, because it's pretty awesome, so stay tuned for that. There's also resource acquisition. Oh, you know, there's gold over there? I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my border around it. So now I have it. We've done that too. There's also misunderstood agreements on how things are decided. You know, there's political treaties that say this is now my territory, it was your territory, all of those sorts of things. There's on top of that, we draw borders. Humans do. And pretty much nothing humans do is perfect. As technology has improved, we've gotten better at taking this 3D meat space and putting it onto 2D paper, but we're still not great at it in a lot of different ways. Why? because the technology isn't perfect and humans are operating the technology. We have to literally walk around and point one thing at another thing and say, okay, you are 100 feet away from me. Now walk another 100 feet and we'll put that on the map too. That's surveying. I mean, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's surveying. You've seen it probably in your hometown. There are whole companies, this is all that they do and we screw it up all the time and borders have to change. Lines on a map seem very straight, but the more you zoom in, the less clean and straight they are and the more messy they are. And lines are redrawn all the time. Let me give you a great example that we found while researching this episode. The Four Corners, if you're not from the US, is where Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado all come together. And at that spot, it's kind of a tourist attraction, there's something called the Four Corners. And then there's a little monument there and it's like, look, I'm in Utah, look, I'm in Arizona, look, I'm in all four places because I'm laying down. So. That's actually not in the right spot. According to the United States National Geodetic Survey, there's more than a thousand feet between the actual spot and where the monument says that the Four Corners are. The real Four Corners is a thousand feet east of that. But of course, you can't get a selfie with a piece of dirt, you know, where an imaginary line is. So me get popcorn and a selfie and take it by the monument. Either way, there's also accidents. Sometimes borders are drawn on a map accidentally. We put the line in the wrong place, that happens too. They have to be redrawn and over time, borders are refined and they change as technology improves. But the most common borders are still things that everyone kind of recognizes. Big geographical things like mountains or rivers or lakes or oceans. So let's use California as an example. When California was being drawn, it was agreed that they would draw their eastern border along the Sierra Nevada mountains. It was practical, big mountain range, we all know it's there. You know, you draw a line down those mountains, that's the edge of California, easy. The other side of that, that's Nevada. On October 11th, 1849, James M. Jones wrote into the Constitution of 1849, the boundary of the state of California shall be as follows, and this is all legal speak, so I'm gonna zoom right through it. Commencing at the point of the intersection of 42nd degree of north latitude with 120th degree of longitude west from Greenwich and running south along the stead line of 120th degree west longitude until it intersects the 39th degree of north latitude, blah, 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 blah. It followed a river, it followed some sections, and it followed some imaginary lines on a piece of paper to the Pacific Ocean, included all of the harbors and bays and beaches, and then went down to the south and then drew another imaginary line across. Some dude sitting in an office looked at this earth and said, okay, California is gonna be right here. And the problem is, <laughs> this was kind of one big educated guess. No one followed these lines to the T. No one walked out to the lines with accuracy and was like, oh, okay, so we have to walk straight along here and we're walking along the border of California, great. 
The lines actually cut into Utah, or what is Nevada now. It went over rugged mountainous country that we couldn't have crossed. It went through several tribes of hostile Indians and in their territories. It passed through forests that were so dense that we couldn't have cut through them, over unexplored and uninhabited deserts that we could not actually walk through. And basically, James M. Jones was all like, YOLO, we got our lines. Deal with it, future people. Then came the gold rush, which got, made things even more complicated, and we'll talk about that in a minute. In the end, the basic model of border disputes is borders aren't perfect, and we all know this. So a bunch of folks get together, they take educated guesses, and they try and figure out where the border, quote unquote, should be. On top of that, we also have even more ambiguous border systems. I mean, we're talking about like mountain ranges, oceans, rivers, lakes, you know, a lot of reasons states and countries have squiggly edges is because there's a river there or there's a mountain range there. But what about political boundary lines? You know, boundary lines within countries, states that we just kind of invented and made up or even more specific counties that we invented and made up or even more specific political districts that are for voting. You've probably heard a lot about gerrymandering which is the idea that political districts are redrawn to skew votes. This all has to do with the fact that most of these borders are just invented. If you're not familiar with what a political district is, it's how people decide who they're gonna vote for for Congress here in the United States. So in a ideal world, the states would all have political districts that were perfect considering their population. So in a state of 100 people, there would be five perfectly drawn districts. In a perfect world, if 60% of the persons in that district are Republican, 40% are Democrat, then each of those districts would have 60% Republican people in them and 40% Democrat people in them too, because that way it represents them in Congress. However, because borders are so ambiguous, they get redrawn all the time. And in this case, the foxes are the ones drawing the hen house. <laughs> They redraw border lines all the time, and Republicans and Democrats will redraw them to give themselves favor when it comes to voters. Uh, I have a friend who lives in Houston, and he lives in a very liberal part of Houston downtown, which has a little bubble around it. Then a long line out to a suburb with a huge bubble around that, and then a long line back to the little liberal area downtown. That way it quote unquote balances their district. But what it really does is makes it so the people downtown aren't represented accurately. So gerrymandering is just one example of imaginary borders that are being redrawn all the time and they're doing it for a, one of many reasons. You know, there's also land rights versus mineral rights. There's property lines which can be redrawn all the time and those are owned by municipalities and we're deciding who owns how many acres here and there and what do they own? Do they own just the top of the land or do they own what's underneath it? That's the difference between land rights and mineral rights. But there are fixes for this stuff and a lot of it just means being logical. To go back to gerrymandering for one second, a guy in his free time made a piece of software that evenly creates voting districts. They're optimally compact at equal population and the map creates it. They're very easy to read, it's clean shapes, super cool. But borders are supposed to divide us up. That's what they're for. That's why we have them. That's why we invented them as ancient humans. It was supposed to help us feel secure, protect ourselves, protect our resources and our mates. But sometimes things go bad. Gerrymandering is one example, but it ain't even the worst example. We'll come back tomorrow and talk a little bit about some of the ways borders can really mess things up. Why don't you tell us down in the comments how you feel about gerrymandering or borders in general. And keep coming back to Test Tube Plus every single day because we're gonna have a new video tomorrow also about borders and boundaries. And I think you're really gonna like this one because it's about the Middle East. Yeah. Thanks for watching, I'm Trace. We'll see you tomorrow.